What's up guys, 70 Savage here and welcome to the channel. Uh, it's a pretty exciting day today as it is the very first video ever for this YouTube channel. Um, the topic today is getting into designing your van life van conversion um, and designing it in SketchUp and how to do that. Uh, before we get into that though, I want to do a brief overview of why I wanted to create this channel and what um, you know my whole motto is. So if you don't give a shit about that, click this and it will take you straight to the content. Um, so I am currently in the process of selling all my stuff uh, as you can see and moving into a van conversion that I'm going to build myself. Um, everything that I've learned about doing this van conversion or you know the knowledge that I'm going to apply to building this van I've learned on YouTube um, and so what I want to do is give back to this community that's taught me so much. Uh, there's lots of awesome videos out there, there's lots of great content and I hope that I can just be you know another data point on your research for doing your van conversion. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. All right, so the goal for this video is to teach you guys enough to get your ideas into a three-dimensional space. Um, it's much more powerful to use a tool like SketchUp because of that three-dimensional space so that you can orbit your designs and get a feel for your van in 3D. Um, it's much more powerful than using you know, pen and paper or using a tool like PowerPoint where you can only see your van design from one perspective. Um, that being said, I'm not trying to teach you guys enough to where you can take precise measurements from the SketchUp design that you have and straight up go ahead and cut wood uh, from that to put in your van. This is just to get your ideas on paper. This is just to, you know, let the creativity flow. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the computer screen and get started with the software. I'm gonna give you guys a brief overview of my current design, of the design that I am planning on uh, dabbling with once I purchased my van. Um, as you can see, it's good enough to get an idea for what the van is going to look like, what the layout's going to be, you know, what stuff's going to be in the van. There's a little shower pan here, um, a fridge, a sink, a little kitchenette area, a bench with a toilet hidden underneath it, um, a, a floating bed that's going to retract and expand uh, based on whether or not I'm using the shower, um, you know, an area back here for my water tanks and a uh, water heater, eventually a little water pump, um, my battery system with, you know, four lithium batteries, uh, a 2000 watt inverter, um, some solar panels and a, and a max fan or something like that back here. Uh, it, it's good enough to see what you want in the van and take, you know, some rough measurements of the products that you're finding online, such as these batteries, uh, they're actually like to spec. If you measure them out, they're you know 12 inches by nine inches, which is the dimensions that I saw on Amazon when I was looking for the product. But it's not perfect. Obviously, some of the cabinets are hollow and some of them are not. Uh, that's kind of a summary of you know why this is good enough to give you the layout that you need and not be production ready. Um, I've spent a ton of time, I'm, ta I'm talking hours and hours and hours just taking this van and orbiting around it like this, just thinking, okay, is this what I want? What can be improved? I'd say, you know, 90% of the time I've spent orbiting this. My girlfriend sits on the couch over there and she's like, you've literally been staring at that thing for an hour and, uh, you know, spinning it around. Are you actually going to do anything with it? And uh, there's a lot of thinking involved. So it's really nice to have this 3D visualization of what you want to create so that you can get accurate enough uh, to let the creativity flow. I've gone ahead and created a rough mock-up of an extended length high roof Ram ProMaster. Um, it can be used as a template to adopt to any van of your choosing. I went to this link here um, and just looked at the dimensions for a ProMaster extended wheelbase high roof and found the dimensions and created this template from that. So you can use this template and adopt it to you know either a ProMaster, a Transit, or a Sprinter of any length wheelbase um, and any roof height uh, to your liking. To use my template as a starting point, go ahead and click the download button and select the SketchUp 2019 model. Um, 
At that point, you can go into app.sketchup.com where you're gonna to have to create a Trimble account and sign up with your email address, et cetera. You need to do that to be able to use the software. Um, once you sign up, you're gonna be given this default model here. Uh, that's just this man who's perpetually staring at me. Um, we're gonna go ahead and delete him. Sorry, bud. Uh, you can take the download from the SketchUp warehouse and select insert as component. That will drop the template in here. Um, as you can see, this template is a straight up box according to the dimensions that I found on this page here uh, with some wheel wells and that's about it. You know, I put things in layers so that you can remove them and take a look at things from different perspectives, open the van up a little bit, but it's, it's straight up just a box. Um, it doesn't necessarily accurately reflect all of the vans because, you know, as the van height increases, the roof is gonna get, or the, uh, the width is gonna get skinnier. You know, the, the roofs are skinnier than, than the floors, um, but that's okay. We're, we're just trying to get stuff into the van, uh, see how much room that you have to work with and get an idea for what you want your van to look like. So there are seven tools that you need to know to be able to mock up your, fan, your van and get your ideas into SketchUp. The first tool we're gonna go over is the select tool here. It's this arrow icon on the left-hand side. The select tool allows you to grab objects within your view so that you can further manipulate them or drag them around or delete them, etc. cetera. Um, interesting thing about the select tool is that it does a different thing if you drag from left to right or right to left. If you drag from left to right, it will only select objects that are like 100% within the selection view. As you can see, it's not selecting anything here because nothing's complete. But if I go to the whole van, it will actually grab all the stuff that's within that view. Whereas if I go left to right in the same area, it's going to select anything that's even partially within that selection view. So objects that are started but not complete um, within that selection view, it will get. Tool number two is the orbit and pan tool. You're gonna to use this one a bunch. This is how you uh, change what you see in your view. Uh, the orbit tool allows you to rotate around your objects and if you hold shift, that is the pan tool. Um, pan tool can also be manually selected here. I usually just leave it on orbit tool. I do my orbiting and then I press shift for panning. Tool number three is the line tool. This is where we start getting into the creation of objects. The line tool allows you to create faces of any custom shape. So let's say we wanna create the base to a bench. We can create it by selecting the line tool on the left and creating our points by clicking once, clicking twice, clicking three times, four times, and then finally completing the square. Um, we now have a face down here that was created from that line tool. Uh, the line tool could be used anywhere. We can create another face here. Uh, that one's not a perfect square. You can create uh, faces anywhere using the line tool. It's really useful. The fourth tool is the rectangle tool. It's similar to the line tool in that it's used to create objects, but uh, in this case, you can only create rectangles. So we can create a rectangle here, um, and using the select tool, we can determine that is a new face. Uh, you can create re rectangles on any axis you want. That one would be on the blue axis, and this one would be on the green axis. Um, it's useful for, for creating perfect squares, which you need to do a lot of the time, uh, especially for mocking up things like cabinets and bed frames, stuff like that. Um, but what you might be wondering is, what do I do with a face? Obviously, a face has no depth to it. It has no mass. It's just a two-dimensional uh, thing, as if I was drawing it on paper. Well, what you can do with that face is select it with the select tool. Just click right on the middle of it where you see the little blue dots uh, showing that you selected the face. And then you can grab the push-pull pull tool, which is our tool number five here. Um, the push-pull tool allows you to take any face and turn it into a three-dimensional object. Um, pretty cool with squares, you can make boxes like this. Uh, on the bottom right here, you can see the dimensions of, of what you've created. So with the push-pull tool here, um, Let's take it back to the original face. If I were to drag this up and I wanted it to be a 12 inch high box, you 
do the dragging, you let go of the mouse, you type 12 and you press enter. This is now a 12 inch tall box. Um, the next most important tool, tool number six is gonna be the move tool. So if we triple click this box that we just made and we select the move tool on the left hand side, we can move that box around. Super useful, especially in combination with the orbit tool. It allows you to kind of place this box wherever you want. It's, it's a bit of an art to uh, place things three dimensionally. You're kind of, you'll kind of just start getting used to the combination of the orbit tool, the pan tool and the move tool to get objects in the place that you want them to be. Um, Last up, we have the measure tool. The measure tool uh, doesn't create anything except for sometimes it creates measurement lines, but you know, most of the time you're using the measurement tool to measure how big an object you previously created is. Um, so if I, if I created this bench here and I wanted to say, huh, you know, I just, you know, I measured a, one of the stools over in my kitchen and I decided that 12 inches high is way too short to sit on. I wanna make it uh, two feet high and I see how high this one is right now at 12 feet, then I, I realize I need to pull this an extra foot. So I can take my push pull, pull tool, I can add another 12 inches, and now this is a two foot high box. Um, so that, that's it, those are the seven tools that you need to be dangerous in SketchUp. So other than the tools, there are a couple other, what I like to call concepts that you need to know um, so that you can create your ideas in SketchUp. Um, the first concept that I wanna teach is the concept of a component. A component is an object that you've created and you want to declare, okay, this thing's gonna stick around for a while. I don't want this thing to, in, you know, if I create a new face, I don't want it to interact with, with this thing and I want it to stay as it is um, until I choose to edit it. So to create a component, you take an object that you created. You can see, you know, when I click on this object right now, it's not a component yet. It selects an individual face. You triple click the object, you right click it and you select make component. We can just call this bench seat for now. That's a pretty pathetic bench seat, but you get the point. Um, and now when I select this, with a single click, is lagging there a little bit, but when I select it with a single click, it selects the entire component. Um, I can drag that around with one click. That kind of just solidifies the object that you created and tells SketchUp, okay, I want these things to stick together whenever I drag them around. Um, you can still you know, triple click on it and go in and modify individual faces, etc. cetera. Um, but in general, after you create an object and you decide this is gonna be a piece of your van, right click it and make it a component. Um, if you don't do that, things are gonna start interacting with each other uh, on accident. Like if I were to draw a face over here, expand it and then deselect it, it's gonna actually pull the face that it touched on this object, um, which is probably not what I wanted to do intentionally. So, so make things components uh, pretty eagerly. Once you make it a component, um, you can select the entity info tool up here um, which just shows you, okay, so now I deselected it. There's nothing in the entity info. When I select the component, the info shows up in the entity info on the top here. Um, you can see it's the bench seat component that we named it. And you know, you can add it to a layer. So if we wanted to add it to the floor, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, you can see now it's in the current layer floor. And when I hide or show the floor layer, whoops, when I hide or show the floor layer, it is part of that layer. Um, probably don't want it to be on that layer, so I'm gonna put it back to layer zero. Layer zero is just like the default layer where everything shows up uh, before you manually assign it to another layer. Um, so I guess that covers layers as well, which is the second topic that I wanted to cover. Uh, between layers and components, that is honestly all you need to end up with something looking like this. Um, as time goes on, you might end up dabbling with some of these tools in here and finding some things are useful now and then for different scenarios. Um, you know, something that I use and didn't mention in the other tools is the, is the rotate tool. You can use it to rotate a component on any axis. Uh, that's an interesting one, but I decided not to put it in here because I don't use it all that often, uh, not nearly as much as the, the original seven tools. So 
there you go. Those are the concepts that you need to know combined with the tools on the left hand side here to create your conversion bin. I just wanna wrap it up with a couple of tips that I have for getting to a point like this. Um, spend a lot of time thinking, a lot of time analyzing what you have there you know, going back and forth between here and maybe watching some inspirational YouTube videos, um, other van lifers coming back in here, making some small modifications. But, you know, in general, you're going to spend 90% of the time thinking and observing and looking at what you have, you know, roughly about 10% of the time making actual changes. Um, the goal is once you get to a point like this, you can go out, you know, purchase your van and start mocking things up in cardboard. So what I'm gonna do is, is purchase a Sprinter van, in my case a, a 144. Uh, I'm gonna buy a bunch of cardboard and kind of make uh, examples of these objects that I've created here in cardboard, place them in my van and get a feel for what it looks like in real life. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Uh, see you next time.